absorb like water and other freely? It doesn't ab ab absorb freely. It needs to be actively, actively absorbed and transported. What do I mean be actively? That's mean it needs a carrier, okay? It needs to go from one spot to another, it needs carrier. It needs UPS for transportation, okay? And what happens needs that carrier to get it from small intestine into the blood from and from the blood brain uh, barrier into the brain. So it's two positions. And the protein that we eat, whether it is a steak or mom, as you said, glass of milk or you know eggs or insure supplements, anything that has high uh, protein, eventually it comes degraded to the smallest part, which is called amino acids. So we have here amino acids from the diet, from the steak that you ate, from the protein. And you have here the do uh, L-DOPA. So both of them, when they come to the site of absorption, well, both of them want to get to the carrier. Both of them want to get into the UPS. Both of them want to get to the brain. And that's where we got into the problem. Who wants to get there? Who wants to go there? So it will affect how long it takes for the L-DOPA to get there. Transport, because we have two transports at two positions. And if the drug sometimes gets there. And that's where we get the problem, right there, the competition between drug and nutrient uh, interaction. So therefore, you know, sometimes we get the patients say, you know, they go to their doctor, doctor, you know the medication that you put me on? It doesn't work anymore. It's not working. So the doctor has to do, increase the dose of the medication, right? Increase the dose of the medication. Remember, as time goes by, we have more distraction of the neurons we are depending therefore more and more from the exogenous dopamine from the aldopa in comparison in the beginning of, of the disease. So uh, therefore it's important once we get this problem try to avoid it or maybe how to solve it or to get around it is really to a meal planning. So we have different ways of meal planning and trying to avoid taking the protein at the same time as the, uh, the, the drug, the medication. So one of these things is called balance protein. I'm trying to do, do quickly here, uh, so I try to cover as much as possible. Usually I can spend on the slide for the longest time, but balance protein meal plan. So basically it's really, once the patient we have, we look at you know if they have any deficiency, malnutrition, calories and stuff, we look at the lab, past medical history, try to design a meal where they have enough of protein because each person has different need of the protein. Once we calculate how much, then we try to divide it in three meals and leave the snacks between the meals kind of uh, as the lowest protein or no protein, okay? To allow uh, the absorption of medication without interference of the, uh, the amino acids from the diet. And the second thing, and, and the patient can be on this for the longest, it depends on the, uh, in the beginning, it could be takes months or years, it depends on the rate of progression of the disease. The next thing then, and sometimes we see patients like that, they impose the diet on themselves. And this called evening, evening protein. What does this word come from, evening protein? Meaningly, meaningly, evening protein? Uh, evening, that means they leave the protein to the evening and they don't take any protein during the day. So they allow better motor function through the day, okay? It does work, but this is my thing. If, try to do it with the health professional, like your physician, with the, work with your nutritionist, because if you do it on your own, this kind of the diet contribute to further weight loss that we're gonna see later on further weight loss and nutrient deficiencies. Okay, so this is not my favorite uh, plan unless it really has to be uh, closely monitored. The other one is high carbohydrate meal plan and it works among two thirds of the patient with Parkinson's disease. Basically, what it is is to having the meals or diet uh, five, seven parts of carbohydrate to one part of protein. So basically they have too much carbohydrate throughout the day. The day. And um, as I say, it works great 
But the thing is, you cannot design a meal plan less than 1,800 calories. So uh, with these calories, if you have a patient, like a, a wee small lady, 1,800 might be too much for her. This kind of diet contraindicated in patients with the endocrine problems, such as people diabetes, exactly. Because then you know, they, have a, they need carbohydrate, but they have limited amount of the carbohydrates. That doesn't work with them. Also, people with any kind of pro uh, problem with the pulmonary, such as COPD. Okay, because this diet again produces too much CO2, and that will be put too much uh, pressure and uh, stress on their lungs. So people with COPD and pulmonary, people who have hypertriglyceridemia, that means high triglycerides, then that's contraindicated in this in this case. So the next thing uh, uh, issue that we deal with is the weight loss, and about more than 50 percent of Parkinson uh, patients, they have this problem. And the reason for that, what do you think? Why do you think? Anybody here, Parkinson, they suffer from weight loss? Yes. Sure. <laughs> you feel great now? Yes, and soft beans, cookies, and everything. Oh, see. Gain weight. I see. He's not suffering. And, and for yourself, you can have all the cookies, and you can have one maybe cookie once in a while. You have to w w watch what you eat, right? I lost 60 pounds. Since we lost, uh, saw you last time on the cruise? No. No. Huh. no. Okay, we we'll try not to go further. I have lost it. All right. Okay. We we'll try to maintain it, okay? To maintain the nutritional status. Because what happens uh, 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 with the Parkinson uh, patients, we have increased the energy expenditure. They lose weight because they have increased the energy expenditure. Have you seen the hummingbirds? Like this, they move all the time like that. I saw the other day. It's so beautiful. But they eat all the time. They are not. Uh, why? Because this movement, they lose a lot of energy. Okay? So they need to eat in order to balance. Otherwise, with a patient, with the trimmers and all that, they lose if they don't have enough. But we have another problem with the Parkinson patient. They don't take enough for many reasons. Okay? It could be because dysphagia means difficulty in swallowing. It could be depression. It could be physical. It could be because. It's difficult as the time goes to uh, to uh, cook and to for shop, and so there are many reasons for that. Sometimes the um, disease, the side effects of the medication, they don't have an appetite, they have nausea, and others, as we're going to see. Um, it's important to address this problem as early as possible, because when you have, uh, they found out a study, uh, weight loss of anything between five to ten percent of their weight within a year, in older adults, unintentional weight loss is correlated with increased risk, five minutes, okay, with increased risk of mortality. All right, I have five minutes, so I'm, I'm trying. Do you want me to stop here, continue, or do you want to have a question? Continue. Continue. So, so what happens, what, what happens, uh, um, it's very important to address that as soon as possible, okay? Now, weight loss also mean contribute to, also what does it mean? We are losing muscle mass, okay? And if you lose muscle mass, what's going to happen? You get weak. The balance is difficult to maintain the balance. So you are at risk for falls. And remember, risk of falls. With Parkinson patients, they have increased risk of osteoporosis. And that's why we have a problem with the fractures. Okay? And also before way before we have weight loss. What else we have? Before patient we have remarked marked weight loss, actually we have deficiency in micronutrients long before we start that. And those deficiencies in micronutrients contribute to immune, it affects immune system. So your, your immune system goes down and then you are being susceptible for infections. It affects also your cognitive ability, behavioral changes and moods, osteoporosis and other things. And that's because of the micronutrient deficiency. So that's why it's very important to address this uh, uh, problem here in you. I'm sorry I'm going to stop here. We kind of run out of time. I appreciate your attention. I appreciate it's really been a privilege to be among uh, with you here. Uh, I hope to see you in the future. Guys, please put your email 
the foundation does a lot of wonderful work. I, unbelievable. I am, you, uh, you know, privileged to work with them. They do wonderful work in education, the patients, and it's fun. It's fun. Just tell them how much fun we have, oh, Mr. Pirates. Huh? It was wonderful. It was wonderful. It is fun. It's educational. It's support. So put your name in the emails, or just always get into the website for Parkinson Foundation. Find which events you like, and we'd love to see you sometimes.